So we're looking for better, easier ways that can also inform and expand your, your awareness. So a few better, easier things we can do. What's wrong with this picture? This is what we normally do. We hear a pitch pipe note, then we sing the note. Okay, here's the reference pitch or pitch pipe, and then we sing the note. But what we do as singers is that we sing with each other. So we're gonna change it so that we hear the reference pitch and we sing with it. Now there's something really wrong with this picture and even more wrong with this picture. Can you see what it is? It's not the same pitch, it's an octave difference. And so we're not pitch matching, we're matching the note, but we're trying to match an octave away this is one singer trying a couple different notes. You can tell because the grid lines are the same. Sings, hears a note and sings it. Tries another note and sings it. And yep, more or less the same note. You can read it over here, it's the same note name. Pretty close, but an octave away. And here's two different singers whose reference note is a full two octaves away from the note that they're trying to um, reproduce. Again, with this one, two octave difference. So there's two things wrong. We're singing after the note instead of with the note, way easier. And it's in the wrong octave or even two octaves away. Now there's one other thing, and that's the quality of that note. So you can't see the quality on this. It's just a dead straight note. But we know that pitch pipes sound thin and nasally and we've gotten really good at ignoring them because we habitually sing under that that and i'll explain why later but we'll do it a hundred times a night on a rehearsal night so just the mere sound of that pitch pipe is wrong to start with but now it's also got a habit behind it of us singing under that pitch so why not use a sound like a church organ that is full rich in harmonics and in the same octave. Just so you'll know what the note is, we're gonna, we're gonna use this G below middle C on a piano. So there's middle C, here's the G we're gonna sing, which is right in the middle of the range for like baritones, leads, basses, tenors. Um, it's in the middle of your normal voice. Don't, don't sing this one. Sing that one, same with the basses. Don't sing this note. Sing this middle G basses. And just so you see what it looks like on the staff, this G for basses is this fourth space. One, two, three, four are the spaces. The lines are one, two, three, four, five. So there it is, fourth space. And for um, a transposing treble clef, if that eight was in there, it would be this G, also called a G clef because it circles the line G. So this G written with the eight means that it's actually going to be this G. So this G is the only G we're singing. Not this one, this one, not this one, this one, only this G, but we're gonna sing it with the organ. So here's the organ sound. And we're gonna sing along with that. I'm going to demonstrate first and I'm going to show you singing with it and then below it and then above it and back to with it. So you can hear me and the organ interact. So when I'm below the pitch or above, you'll hear this beating sensation. All right, here it is. G. you can notice whether it's below and it's beating and see if you can get the beating to cancel out until it stops. You can just notice what the beating effect is if you're different than this note. Okay, so now match the note again 
and notice what it feels like when there's no vibration, there's no beating effect. You're dead in tune with this note and it has a certain place and a certain feeling that corresponds with what you hear this note to be. Okay, so sing with it and notice what it feels like. Go. If you've matched that and you know what it feels like, sing the note first and then I'll, I'll bring the note in and see if it's the same. Ready? To sing by yourself. Ready? Go. Sing. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Da, da, da. There. Did it match? Okay. Sing it again. Did it match? Okay. So now we're gonna, we're actually singing after the note. So in this case, we're going to go from memory. Do you remember what it sounded like and what it felt like? Uh, you sing first, go ahead. Okay, did it match? All right, so that's <clears throat> a way of seeing if your ability to hear the sound and then pitch match it while the sound is there and then remember where that is so that you can pitch match after the sound. Okay, to make things easy, you don't have to worry about blowing a pitch pipe or finding an appropriate sound. You just need to play this YouTube. So you get an email from me, you click on the link, and this is the only way to get there because it's unlisted. So only you guys have this. You go there, and it's called Tidesman Record One Note G. So if I if I make this um, public, um, you could search it that way. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, it gives you a little description here. Um, you say show more and you'll get the, the what to do with this. So it tells you, the most important thing in there is how to use it, which it will also tell you when it does it. But it tells you to make sure the volume is loud enough. So it's going to play a, a G and you're going to sing along with it. So first thing it tells you, I'm going to stop it again, is have your phone or voice recorder ready. Okay. And then it starts to note. It says practice if you want. This G will sound for two minutes. You can sing along with it. G. And so on. You know, and always sing, relax, and feel free. When you're ready, start recording while the G is sounding. Like right now would be a good time to do that. And let's say I did that. I start my recorder, and then I start singing. G. And then say that's long enough. I finish my note, and then I stop my recording. Okay, and that's it. You can do it as many times as you want. Um, but don't forget to send me your recording.